All right, ladies and gentlemen, all those of you that are with us right now, thanks for joining us here on Boring Reviews. We are are excited to have a movie chat with myself, Gabe, and the professor from Movie Community College. Professor, what do you got to say? Uh, I, I got to probably start with hello. How are you, Boring Reviews? <laughs> you doing good? Uh, we, we, we are great. How are you, Gabe? I'm fabulous, man. Fabulous. Just finished off uh, the last week of school, so now I have all summer break to uh, do the same thing I've been doing for the last two months for the most part. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited that they're starting to lift some of these lockdown restrictions, man, so we can get the kids out of the house and get something done. Is it Cameo on your coffee cup? Yeah. <laughs> Is it Cameo? <laughs> Or Arsenio? Yeah, no, no, no. That's uh, that's um, Ganesh Gaitone Remember Day, Cameo? man. Who? Cam Ganesh Gaitone Day from uh, Nawaz Siddiqui. He's from um, Sacred Games. Oh, okay. Sorry. So, oh, Nawaz Siddiqui. Yeah, you yes. could. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now your logo. We can't like show him for too long, long because then we gotta give him some royalties or whatever. So. <laughs> your logo looks like it's in Hindi. Did you do that on purpose? Yeah, we um we got that created from a, a friend of ours, Varun, uh -huh. and he hooked us up. Yeah. It's got the backwards B. Yeah, it looks very uh like Penn Studio ish. Or uh, you know, some kind of Mahabharat ish look to it. Uh so you guys are in Las Vegas, correct? We are indeed. Yes. Yeah. I, we were supposed to meet up. Um, I was supposed to be formally introduced to you by Jason, uh, Hubbin and Wifus in Vegas. I got family up in Vegas, but then all this craziness <laughs> broke out. It was supposed to be, I think, in June we were going to come up and everybody meet. But I don't, I don't know what happened to to um, Wifus and Hubbin. Hubbin. I don't know if they're in witness protection program or if they've. Uh, where they've gone? Have you heard from them? I, I actually have. So I was I called him. Well, I don't know a few weeks ago, and um, I actually called him because I had all these. I put our email in our business section of our YouTube page, and so we got all these uh, advertisement offers. So I asked him, you know, how does how's this whole thing work? Because they seem a little scammish for me. To right when I put my email up, all of a sudden I got all these emails and uh, offer me all this money. And so he gave me good information that I think you share with him about FameBit. And he shared me with me a social blue book. And he basically said, you know, of all the offers he's gotten, only one was legitimate. So he gave me some good tips on how to look out for that. But he was telling me some stuff that was going on. And basically, he's just been super busy. So he does his own um, photography business and he does editing and whatnot. And so during this whole beginning of the pandemic, he his own business you know was kind of suffering a little bit and so he something about doing like some kind of discount for his customers and then everyone came out of the woodwork at that great price and they all just you know, kept him super busy and so he's just been you know going crazy with that and obviously his wife's a nurse and so she's been busy with this whole craziness so i i don't know what their future is with the youtube channel he didn't say anything to me about that but they definitely have been a mia with the exception of one live stream were you with him on that live stream that he did no I, that was ago? a couple live streams ago probably two or three back that i jumped in with them on a live stream yeah i i actually was able to catch so, like uh, some of that live stream and i hopped on there i was just you know showing him some love saying what's up and everything but um yeah he was just telling me you know he has some stuff going on really busy i mean this thing with his wife being a nurse i'm sure she's super busy my uh, cousin's a nurse out here, and she's literally working six day, six days a week, probably ninety hours, six day, uh, ninety hours a week. It's insane. So, uh, you guys like India? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We uh, we're loving the movies. You know, we're huge movie guys, obviously, and so you know, it's it's funny. I, I told a story a few times. We got a request to check out the Saho trailer. And I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right. And we're like, what is that? And so we looked it up and we're like, oh, we're Indian. Okay. So we knew about Bollywood and whatnot. And so we reacted to it. And that's 
just kind of open the, the floodgates and someone commented in that video, you know, you just um, <laughs> open your world to a bunch of craziness and it's, it's, it's been anything, but it's been pretty awesome. We, we've been watching a lot of movies and we've been enjoying them. I've been suffering trying to say some of these names, but we, uh, you know, we're, we're getting into it. You are like one of the, the founding fathers, though. I mean, you've been doing this for a few years, right? Yeah, I have. I think, I think this is year four for us. And so when I started, it was um, uh, Jabby Coy. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of him. Uh, I'm joking like everybody in this genre has. It was Jabby Coy. It was um, the Bali Fools. They were like the two big channels. And then there was like me, Sergeant Rocco, and Cynthia's reactions that we were like all trying to just, you know, can we get a thousand subscribers? Can we get 2,000 subscribers? And I remember uh, the Bali Fools made a really weird turn in their channel. They decided that they were going to take the side of Pakistan on everything and start doing Pakistani films, you know, kind of trying to shame India and the politics. And it just destroyed their channel. And um, I, I started getting off into, I think, like um, more of the culture and the politics and uh, the travel stuff, you know, because it was it was pretty much you you just had the movie trailers that people were reacting to, but now it's just like, you know, it's, it's everywhere. You, you, I mean, it's it's like when I just go and I'll, I'll go on YouTube and just like look to see who's up and coming. Like what, what's, it's just like, where did everybody come from? It's just all these reactors are everywhere and it's in it. It's good for India. I mean, it's good for people to get out and, you know, um, to be exposed. I mean, the world's being exposed when you look at like, have you guys seen extraction? On Netflix, of course, yeah, yeah, of course. I, I mean, think it was awesome. You have the Russo brothers finally realizing, like, you know, maybe we should do something with India. They have this huge, uh, huge market. I think if you took Selman Khan, like, I, I personally don't like Selman Khan as a person, but, but his movies are fine. But if you took him and you dropped him in, like, uh, The Expendables, it would just be lights out. They would, they would sell so many movie tickets. I mean, it would just be so ridiculous the numbers they would get on something like that. And I and I think it's it's just good to have, it's just good to have more exposure for India. You know, it's 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 good. Now I uh, I watch I watch your channel, and I like your channel. I love the name. Uh, where'd you guys come up with that name at? <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, it's it's funny. So we're both teachers, and that's you know that's going to be our day job till the end of time. But you're I, uh, there's a thing for teachers called teacher. Oh, you're teacher. Say that again. Did you say teacher? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. yeah elementary teacher. school teachers. Yeah. That's how we actually met was he, uh, he joined the fourth grade team many years ago and uh, we, you know, we, we, we formed a bond that way, but there's a thing called teacher pay teachers where you create resources for other teachers. They pay like 50 cents or a dollar for the, um, the downloadable PDF and they can use it in their class if they want to. So I created a little store on there. It's got like five things on it. I don't really do much with it, but I wanted to call it boring teacher because as a, as a male teacher, most of us don't create stuff too fluffy and too fancy. It's just the nitty gritty, boring stuff, but good information. And so I wanted to be completely transparent. This is boring teacher stuff. If you want it, then buy it. And I sell like $1 a month type of a thing. So it's not like anything crazy. But when we started doing the YouTube channel, I started thinking about it. I thought, you know, we like to talk about movies. I kind of have a monotone voice most of the time. And so I thought, you know, I'm going to be straight up. Let them know this is going to be boring. Um, there's also some sarcasm there, obviously. Um, and I always thought it'd be perfect because if people thought we weren't boring, then we exceeded expectations. But if they hated us, then we didn't lie to them. So in my opinion, it's kind of the perfect name. We've got a lot of flack for it, but we got a lot of love for it too. Hmm. Yeah, that's good. I, I, I didn't know you guys were teachers. I, I thought Jason told me that he thought maybe you were teachers, but he didn't know for sure uh, if you were. And I, I, he told me too that he thought maybe you guys were Christians, but he didn't know for sure either. Is that true? Or am I putting you on the spot with that? No, definitely. Yeah, we're that's Christians yeah, as well. I mean, so, yes, correct, correct. And we've mentioned that in, in a few videos. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, you know, yeah. we are too, and, and it's it's been, 
it's been really uh it's been really cool i think um you know just learn about india and indians culture and how it how it's changed me personally what what are if i can ask you guys like what what's the biggest surprise that you found out of now that you've dove into india that you're just like wow i mean is there something that stands out mm, i don't know i i think for me, it's just how it's two different worlds over there. I mean, it's probably the same thing over here, but you've got, you know, some places that are so modern. And I mean, if you look at some of these cricketing extensions, they're incredible. Um, but then at the same time, there's so much poverty over there as well, some of the slums. So I think that when a lot of people think of India, that's what they think about, but there's two different worlds over there. You know, not so different than where I'm from, Dominican Republic, where, you know, you think about beautiful sandy beaches, you think about the Caribbean, but then there's also a lot of poverty as well. So I think through the film and through a lot of the um, research we've done, we've learned about the two different worlds in India and just how big, I knew, again, a billion people, but how big their movie industry was, I had no idea. I had no idea. Hmm. Yeah, I would say for me, it was the quality of film. And I've said this a few times in our video on our channel, but, you know, and try and explain this to our audience and you can understand this, Professor. Indian films are not big here in the States whatsoever. Right. They're just they're just not advertised. They're not publicized or anything like that. And so I remember years ago, I read a Bollywood article on my Google feed. And so ever since then, I got these Bollywood um, articles that were getting suggested to me. And it wasn't until I started watching movies from this channel, I thought, wow, these are actually legitimate movies. Now, you're going to have your bad movies. You're going to have your OK movies. But they I had had the preconceived notion that they were light years behind Hollywood and they were just trying. But no, they make more movies in Hollywood, I'm pretty sure. And a lot of these movies are, are just fantastic. So, you know, some people, you know, they'll assume that we're just watching the movies for views. And of course, the YouTube channel, you want to get views, but we're watching movies because we're actually enjoying them. And again, there's some that are bad, but most of them are, are pretty good. And we were uh, the first, I don't know, the first 30 or so we watched were highly requested. And we were so lucky because we were getting India's favorite movies requested to us over and over. So we just kept diving into movie after movie after movie, getting them these high grades and thinking like, is it just us or are these movies fantastic? So for me, it's that the second thing would be cricket. We've gotten really into cricket recently. Before that, I thought cricket was a lame game. I knew nothing about it. It was nothing that's ever talked about here in the States. So for me, it's got to be the movies and the cricket. It's just unbelievable. Mm. Yeah. I, I think, I think for myself, one of the things that I've, I've really kind of fallen into is just really um, the learning and studying of uh, like the epics of uh, Ramanyan and Mahabharat. And it's like the more I watch and learn and read about these, then I go and watch the film or the films and you see it in, in all the films. And, and initially when I started watching the movies, I never realized how much religious tones were in all the films. And if you think about like, if America was like that, if the American films were like that, it would be like, you know, you're seeing a big scene in Die Hard and all of a sudden, you know, uh, John McClane takes a knee and says, for you, Lord Jesus, I do this. And would go on and America would just bust up like, you know, being really upset by <laughs> I can't believe what is going on. And yet in India, you see it everywhere. It's, it's just woven into everything. You see it in the fabrics. You see it in things hanging behind the actors or being set in the temple or whatnot. And I think that's that's really, uh, really cool. Um, one of the things that I really want to do is. You know, you you look around at at some of the other channels. You look at the industry. I'm, I mean, I'm concerned about the industry, and um, I I think the next step would really be real collaboration with people, and it's and it's hard to find. And I'm really hoping to find channels like what you have where we can come together a couple times a year. And you know, block out a you know, block out a, a a Saturday or something, and just do a bunch of videos and be exposed because I think it's cross pollinization. I think it's just so important if you want to if you want to continue on. You know, I think it just it gets it 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 makes you better, it makes me better, it gives the uh, the viewer 
better content, better ideas, better, you know, and that's one of the things I really want to do is, is I, I want to, I want, I want to come up in, uh, to Las Vegas. I want, I want to do videos with your guys and your crew and, and make a day of it. And, you know, um, give our friends that watch us something different, something unique. I mean, it's, it's, um, you know, there's a, I, my opinion, this is my opinion. I think there's a lot of insincerity in the reaction genre. There's a lot of people I think who just, you know, who have, who are really good at just being overly expressive or making fools of themselves for views or have the right, uh, the right, um, mixture of people that they have on with them all the time. But the, but the analysis is not, is not very good. I don't think the knowledge is very genuine. And I, I just think that we owe it to India to give them a, a better, more understood product. Now that's not always popular. Um, but, but anyways, that's my take. Do you guys think I'm wrong on this? Would you, do you, would you disagree? I, th I think you're absolutely wrong. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, you're absolutely right. <laughs> um, I, I have noticed as well, and I've mentioned this a few times, me and Gabe have talked about it quite a few be times behind the scenes that you can, we feel we can tell when reaction channels are being disgenuine. And I feel like it's, it's, it's not fair to, you know, the Indian public. Now, using some honesty, our channel would not really exist at its level, not even close to that if it wasn't for Indian content that we jumped into. But I am proud to say that we didn't do research and find out that, you know, foreigners reacting to Indian content creates a big channel. We came into it organically, and I'm very proud of that. And we've enjoyed what we've been watching thus far. Um, and, you know, it's 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 hard when you get started. One of our first reaction videos that we did that was Indian content was 2.0. And me and Jody reacted to it, my wife, and we after we were done reacting to it, we said, that looked like garbage. That looked horrible. And we basically destroyed the entire trailer. You're right. And, you know, I, I was terrified to post that on the internet because I was afraid that they were going to destroy us, our audience. But that's what I want boring reviews. That's what I want YouTube channels to be, a place where anyone, whether they're an Indian or they're an American that loves Indian content, they can come to and they can get an honest opinion, not a watered down opinion, not something you want to hear because it's Super easy for me to sit here and say, oh, professor, I've watched all your videos. You are the best looking man in the world. You have the coolest hats, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, that may not always be 100 percent genuine. And I feel like if you go to a YouTube channel, you want to get that genuine um, feel. And the videos that I have seen of yours, I'm a subscriber, by the way, is um, genuineness. You, you don't go, you know, in my opinion, you're not doing anything fake. You're doing things in your opinion. Um, I remember one of your videos. Those you had mentioned that you couldn't stand um, AJ for the longest time, but then you saw my thing in Drisham and it changed your mind. And I was like, "Man, this guy is not afraid to be real." And I thought that was awesome. Yeah, yeah <laughs> um, I, I I think like one of the things I catch garbage about a lot is SRK. I think SRK is very much like uh, Tom Cruise in America. That if you give him a really good director, a really good script, a really good supporting cast he's going to give you a phenomenal movie. But if one of those are missing all of a sudden, it's like, whoa, it's a little wobbly. What, what has happened? And it's, and it's not that I don't think SRK is a good actor. I just don't think he's the best that they have to offer. I think my man, Nawazuddin Siddiqui is, is far better of an actor. He plays the perfect creep or cop, no matter what you see him in. It's just always like, he's like, you know, he's, he's mastered creepiness. Um, uh, so, where did you get that coffee cup from, Gabe? <laughs> I actually ordered it online, man. I was able to find it on Amazon. And, mm. you know, everybody's in the comments right now. Sorry, guys. Unfortunately, wife got back late last night, so I'm outside of the regular studio. That's why I'm having the lighting issues. Uh, but anyway, um, what, 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 what it is is I, we watched, I want to say, the very first thing we saw with Nawaz was um, Gangs of Wasifer. And bro, I cr I crushed him. I was like, man, this guy's a twerp. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm always like, I'm, I'm the guy in Star Wars who loves the Sith. I have no problem being against the grain. That's just who I am. You know what I mean? Uh, and then everybody was like, you got to watch the second part. And then in the second part, when he went super dark, bro, and took my man's head off sitting next to him, I was like, oh, 
instant fan. And then after that, I've seen him in Sacred Games. I've seen him in pretty much everything I could, uh, uh, that I that I can find. And he's just an amazing actor. So you're right. He has that cringe worthiness about him. Yes, he's not yes. a big dude, but he's super intimidating. The kind of guy like. If I'm walking down the street and I see him coming, I'm going the other way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to cross the street. You know, your spider so senses starts thinking like this guy's danger. And he has absolutely mastered that. So I agree. He's a fabulous actor. But, dude, <laughs> I tell you what, uh, you were talking about Nawaz, dude. He is probably one of, I, I, for me personally, I would say he's top three of all the Indian actors, and I would still have to put him up there in today's generation with the top ten American actors, man. Because this guy has this, 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 this presence about him. You know who he reminds me of? Joe Pesci, and you can remember this. Joe Pesci is five foot what? Two five, five foot Damn, three. Baby. And he was so intimidating in all those gangster movies back in the late mm -hmm. 80s and early 90s. Mm -hmm. But I've met him. I've driven him before. I used to drive limos here at the casino. The guy's super small. He's a shrimp. But you wouldn't say that to that guy, right, right. especially. You know, right, right. He has that kind of aura about him, that kind of presence mm -hmm. where he just uh, exudes confidence and, and danger, man. So I definitely love him. Again, guys, mm -hmm. sorry about the lighting issue. I'm going to try something else here. You know, to get to your question about collaboration, that was something that when I started this channel, Gabe was there from the beginning. Um, we want to do that from the very beginning, but it's tough to do that when you have 10 subscribers or you have 13 subscribers. But in my opinion, I always had the opinion that if YouTubers were able to collaborate, like you're saying, to a few videos a year, or hopefully more live streams or whatever, then that yeah, helps right. both channels. What's 100%. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we we did uh, we've been doing some reactions to Cricket Attic and, and this guy's got way more subscribers than we have. But just by re reacting to their videos, we've had, you know, half a dozen subscribers say, hey, we went to this channel. We subscribed to him because you guys recommend him. And it's not all about subscribers, but it's about exposure. It's about seeing what else is out there. It's about hopefully, hopefully when you go to movie community college or boring reviews, you're getting a different type of, uh, you know, content out there besides you know we're going to react to this trailer which is two minutes long and our video is three minutes long and we spent 45 seconds goofing around or doing whatever or saying things with a high pitch hopefully it's actually talking about that trailer and hopefully when you know more about it it's actually saying oh it's act actor x y and z from these movies or whatever that's what i like to do with my friends when we're sitting around geeking out talking about hollywood films we like talking about the other movies they were in have you seen this have you seen that gym from this person that's what I'm hoping to be able to get to. But with collaboration, you know, I'm going to learn stuff from you and I'm going to be able to um, hopefully we'll be able to make some better videos because of it. So if you're ever in Vegas, man, you're you got a, a seat right next to me here in the studio. We'll have Gabe in here and we'll get some good videos yeah, out there. We're usually up in Vegas two to three times a year. My wife's got family up there. And uh, he, he did work at, at Station Casino, but man, everybody got hammered. It sounds like the it's lockdown. Yeah. Uh, what 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 part of Arizona are you in? I'm sorry, I forgot to ask. I'm I'm in Mesa. I'm in Mesa. Uh, okay. I'm right outside we were Phoenix. To, we were supposed to go to uh, uh, Peoria, Arizona, next week for a yeah. baseball tournament, and it just got canceled, man. And we were shocked because we live out here in Vegas. Everything is still sh shut down. My son plays high school baseball. So the coach said, hey, Arizona is starting up, uh, opening up. They're loosening the restriction. There's a tournament. Who wants to go? And who wants to go is basically you're going. You know what I mean? You're on varsity. You're going or you're going to lose your spot. So everybody's like, all right, let's go. Book my room and everything out there, man. And then we just got the email tonight. Oh, yeah, it's canceled. It was supposed to be next weekend. So not coming your way. <laughs> uh, but you know, I, I was shocked that they had opened it because most states, California, um, ne Nevada, Utah, we travel for all these uh, tournaments, baseball tournaments. And most states still have restrictions where they don't allow so, so youth sporting, especially because such uh, big crowds gather. And I thought, I was like, okay, Arizona's jumping a the gun. They're going to make it happen. But uh, yeah, we just got the email last night. So now it's time to try to get those refunds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. Uh, I know for us, we got a thing from, uh, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm not much of a gambler, but I, I mean, I, I don't gamble at all, but I, I like to go to the casinos for the buffets, which are probably a thing of the past. Maybe. I don't know with all this. And uh, they always got crazy room deals. So there's, um, we got something from the, Ven the Venetian. 
Is that is that right? The Venetian, and it was like a, a yeah, suite Venetian. for super cheap. You know, uh, so me and me and the wife were talking about we'll have to go up there and see family. But I I told her I want to make a weekend out of it because I want to make sure I meet up with you guys and and do some videos. Um, it, you know, I, I mean, that would be awesome. I would be in trouble if because I would just go up there and do all videos with you guys. But there's like family <laughs> up there, you know. So I'd be like, no, you got you got to spend time with the family. It's like, do I do? It? Come on. Let's get them in the video. <laughs> Let's see. Right, so I'll let you guys know. I, I got your uh, number now, uh, Nick, uh, from the email, and uh, you know I'll give you a call as we get closer. As this kind of shakes out, I, I've been out. You know, I've taken a couple months off of work with all this stuff, and I th I think I'm going to be starting back up in, I think next Friday, and I'll get a better idea. You know, you get a, you get into June, July, kind of what the landscape is. Now, when are you guys going back to school? You know, the school year opens the second week of August around there. Um, so, I mean, we're, we got a break until then, but, you know, they're making plans right now. I mean, that's what the rumor mill says. They're making plans to maybe not officially open until September, but we'll still be having our duties in August. We'll still, if it's the online thing, then we'll be doing that whole situation. Um, you know, talking about doing videos, I think it would be awesome that whenever you came down here, um, that we do a few reviews together too. We plan beforehand what movies we want to watch and then we, we do some reviews because I think it'd be really cool to get different perspectives. Um, not that me and Gabe always agree or me and my wife always agree, but to get just a different style and do like a, a three person or four person review, I think that'd be super sweet. So we got to make sure we plan that ahead. I mean, if you, um, guys are, if, you, yeah, maybe, if you guys are up for it, you know, maybe we should do some movie reviews on, on this format here. Would you guys be up for that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, totally, right. totally. You know, you, like Nick, you made a point earlier about your subscriber amount, and then trying to get uh, that it's hard to get collaboration happening. At my subscriber count, it's still hard to get collaboration to happen, and um, wow, and, and I don't, I don't understand why because it's like. You know, one of the things that, uh, you know, the, the, when I first started, YouTube kind of had this list of stuff that they would send me about, you know, helpful hints. And and they said collaboration is the fastest way to grow your channel and, and to be, you know, you, the cross pollination would help you become better because you see somebody like, oh, dude, that's a sweet camera. What is it? I didn't know that worked that way. And you start, you know, becoming better. But, you know, I have such a hard time finding people. <laughs> and it's just like I, I just don't get it man it's just like you know here locally where i'm at i find somebody or run across somebody there's a there's a group that i go speak to maybe once a year they're like um youtubers of scottsdale and, and they can have anywhere from five people show up to 50 and they're all you know in the process of you know i want to start a channel or i'm in my channel right now or i've had some success from the channel and they like to have different youtubers come in and talk about what have you learned you know what what can you save us time on and um and it's just like hey you guys want to collaborate uh yeah sure and then you're like okay let's when you want to do it and they're like yeah i don't know <laughs> I, don't, like, I, don't, I don't i just don't get it so I have a probably controversial opinion as why to that why that is, and and this is a stereotype obviously, but I think the stereotype out there is that YouTubers are, and this is negative, but are somewhat lazy, right? We're sitting at home, we're reacting to other people's stuff, we're reacting to trailers and music videos, you know, we're stealing all this stuff, we're just you know pirating all this nonsense. Which reaction channels know that it's not quite like that, but I wonder if the reason why a lot of channels don't want to collaborate is because it's just a little extra work to coordinate schedules which is not that hard at all to send out a link to do a stream yard or whatever you want mm -hmm. to do and i think that i could be wrong but i think that the the negative side of that is that they just are too lazy to go about it i've had friends in the past that you know they never wanted to get together to hang out for like a movie night or something because it was just too much work and i'm like dude you live like two streets down <laughs> but um, that that's my that's my negative take on it. What I want to know, Professor, is how did you get started in the game? 
Well, I had the YouTube channel for a long time, and but I didn't do anything with it. And um, I started watching uh, Collider on YouTube uh, with like John Campia and the Schmo Nose. Yeah. And um, there was a film that came out that was called the The Prayer Room. Maybe it was a, a Christianese film company. And it centered around a black family who who their marriage was falling apart. They were, you know, had all these difficulties. And I think the wife was a real estate agent um, and she was selling a house for an older black woman. And as she was walking her through the house, you know, to say like, okay, this is a kitchen. This is, she said, oh, this is my warrior closet. And she was like, what do you mean? This is where I go to pray. It was, you know, and it, and it was really this movie then morphed into, uh, you know, the power of prayer in your life and what it can do. And I, and it was doing well and it came out of nowhere and it was in the top five. And it, at the time Collider had, they did like, you know, the top opening films and they would talk about, who's number one how much money did it come in and they all sat and made fun of this film you know they, they all just ripped this film apart and i got super angry and thought you know what if these guys can do this i can do it too and so i i i decided like at the time my son was in college and he was like well uh you don't know how to do anything online and so uh, what you should do is you should call yourself movie community college because you're not like a real college, you know, in <laughs> um, you don't have all the nice university <laughs> programs. It's more like, mm. so I was going to teach you. <laughs> I was, I mean, I was going to teach you comic books. I was going to teach you Spider-Man 101, 202, 303. And I was going to be the professor. And I was starting in on that kind of giving you some stuff. And a young Indian dude said, Hey, I saw your reaction. You should do uh, Bollywood films, the movie trailers. And I went and looked at a couple of them, and I didn't understand any of the context at all. And I uh, did a trailer reaction to Sholay, and uh, there's a scene with Amitabh Bakshan and his co-star, and they're holding hands, two men holding hands. Now, in our culture, that has a different meaning. And so I began to make some jokes about it not understanding who Amitab was and how and and I man I got killed dude I got killed like <laughs> in the comments and so I I said uh I need to make this video private and, and I need to go figure out what the heck is going on <laughs> so I started then like looking at the program like you know trying to understand <laughs> and out of that dude out of that though now Amitab uh Amitab follows my wife on Twitter they're Twitter friends and uh, she loves his movies. No way. Yeah, she, she loves his films. And um, I, so that's kind of how I got wow. started in it. But the thing that hurts me is because I have an opinion. Sometimes I get political. And and when I voice my political concerns of things that I see in India, uh, people get mad. You know, a lot of young people are liberal in their mindset. And, you know, and I see what's going on in India. It's like, it reminds me of like, you know, you think about how America was back in 1982. You know what I mean? It was a different, it's like a different country of what is happening. And there's been this, this attack really in America on traditionalism, on family, and trying to take all this out and leave it. And the same thing is happening in India. It just looks a little different because instead of attacking the Christian foundation, they're attacking a Hindu foundation. And, and the Hinduism ties everybody together their families and you see this secularization happening of india and uh and so when i voice this and again i apologize to you guys if you get any heat about it um when i yeah. when i voice this opinion i've i probably have lost two hundred thousand subscribers over the time because people get mad they just get seriously <laughs> mad and i'm just Gosh. like i don't know and you, you're right Nick, you're right about getting your friends to do this right because it's like you know you talk about the movie night because my friends would be like Hey, that sounds kind of cool, man. I would do some videos with you. Then you're like, oh, just let me know, dude. Come on over. We'll have dinner, right? I'll hook you up, feed you. I can't do it. I can't do it. Or they don't take direction at all. You know, you're like, hey, listen, we're going to watch this. I need you to pay attention. You know, and they're like, can I do my Indian accent? Like, but no, why would you do that? We not knock it off. Just, and, and it's just, so now what I have oh, to do, man. this is what I have to do now. What I have to do now to have people with me reacting is I got to put ads in the paper looking for actors. Like, hey, 
and, and then it's it's just like I shouldn't have to do that. Like now I gotta go find somebody to classify. It. Wanted somebody expressive, somebody interested, open minded to Indian culture, some local it's theater like, talent. <laughs> and it's like it shouldn't be this. Hard. You know, I it shouldn't be this hard. You know, I've been super lucky. I really have, and you know, I. I wear with a badge and honor that I started Born Reviews, but again, Gabe was there like day one. So I really can't take all the credit. And um, I've been lucky because I got Gabe, I got my wife, Jody, my brother, Chris on this channel. And then our friend Adam has been on this channel. He's a pretty busy guy. But I've been lucky so far that those people have, uh, you know, they have a fan base and they have our viewers that subscribe subscribe and watch videos just because of those guys if it was just me i'd probably even with the indian content i'd probably just be at like one or two thousand subscribers and that's not me being human humble i mean I, i'm it's it's helped the channel out considerably and it's helped make it more interesting because you have different voices there but i would be mortified if i had someone with me and they start you know doing an indian accent or something like this because they think they're being funny yes i don't yes. i don't think i'd be able to post that video no, so no i've been super lucky. We've been super yeah. yeah and i i i agree like you know i have i have my wife on periodically and um i i came across a guy who is an actor that i'm i'm going to try to introduce to the channel he's uh he he plays a he plays a director of film um, and, uh, and he's over the top crazy as a director, you know, like just losing his <laughs> mind as a director. So I'm going to have him react to, uh, I don't know if you guys know who Bella Krishna is. He is, uh, don't. if there's any Bella Krishna fans in the comments, I'm sorry. He's terrible. His films are terrible. He always ends up on like, like the top five <laughs> worst Indian films of all time. It's just, it's really, really bad. Like, it's like, it makes the really bad Kung Fu films look like masterpieces. <laughs> it, and I want to get his take on that. But then I'm also then going to show him something really good, too. So he can then get his critical eye on something really good like Uri or something like that. Uh, but I don't, I don't know if that's, we'll see. I don't know. That's funny. That's funny. Uh, dude, <laughs> he's like, he's terrible. That's how I feel about, oh, who's the guy that just um, did Capone? Um, ah, he's also, he also directed the Fantastic Four, the one that absolutely bombed. Uh, Josh Trank. Josh Trank, right? And Josh Trank, when he first started, man, he did, made this movie called, um, Oh, what's the name? It's about these guys, these kids that learn that they got like superpowers or whatever, but it becomes Chronicle. Chronicle was amazing, right? And then oh, all yeah, of the, yeah. and everything else he did after that was absolute garbage. And mm. I wanted to review Capone the other day, and Nick was like, yeah, because he knows when I get really passionate, first of all, we're educators, so we got to be cautious what we say, okay? Uh, you know, people, our friends, you know, other teachers know we have this channel. Some students know we have this channel. And But, bro, I was going to blow my leg. He destroyed Fantastic Four. If you have not seen Capone, watch it just to laugh at how bad this film is. You want to talk about bad film. And how does how does Josh Trank keep getting the bag? How does he keep getting these people to give him money to produce these films that are garbage, bro? He, re he like, reduced Al Capone in this film, one of the most notorious gangsters of all time, into basically a senile old man, like, that... Dude, it, it, it's just it's such a oh, it made me angry. It made me angry. But Nick knows when I get this angry, don't even don't, let's not even review it because I'm gonna say something that's gonna get me in trouble. So he has to watch out for me. Hey, buddy. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel that same way about uh, Josh Trank, brother. <laughs> really? Yeah, I don't. I haven't seen El Capone. I have to look for it. I did wait, see Groundhog wait. Day for the first time. Have you guys ever seen Groundhog Day? Oh, absolutely. For the first time. For the first time. Oh, man, that I was, was sitting, one of my favorites growing up. I was sitting up. in quarantine like, uh, this keeps popping up as trending on Netflix. I've never seen it. I'm going to watch it. And I was like, kind of <laughs> fitting. Just oh. same thing over and over again. Over and over again. <laughs> hmm. Groundhog Day. That would be, I think, I think India could make a good Groundhog Day. I think because a lot of times the in, Indian films will rip off. I don't know if you guys have ever seen, have you seen Freaky Ali? No. That's mm -hmm. Nawazuddin Siddiqui and Freaky Ali, and it's a take on um, Happy Gilmore. So he is the Happy Gilmore player uh, uh, character. At oh, nice. And it's it's ridiculously funny. Back to school, back to school. 
Oh, he does uh, comedy too. It's I, a com. It's a comedy. It's really good. It's good. I definitely got to check that out then. Um, children. Right, so we got what someone in the comment section here about? asking about us to. <laughs> we got someone in the comment section asking us to talk about Shahid Kapoor. Professor, do you know who Shahid Kapoor is? Yeah, yeah. Shahid Kapoor, sure. The actor. Sure, uh, Shahid Kapoor. Um, what? Uh, do you guys know him? Are you familiar with him? Yeah, he, he's a really good actor. Yeah, he was in Hater. He, he's a really he good actor. He was in uh, um, Amir Singh. He was in mm. Uh I think Udap Punjab is my favorite film of him, uh, where he plays uh, the, the rock star on Heroin. And have you guys seen that film? Oh, no, no, it's I, on Netflix. Been really it's really, it's really good. Times. So he's a he's a rock star who's struggling to to maintain his status, and uh, he's kind of being reduced to a one trick pony where he can only write songs about doing heroin. And uh, the film is based in um, in Punjab, so they're very close to Pakistan, and uh, there's. Uh, it's really kind of the story of heroin and how it affects people's lives. And it starts, you know, you start seeing different people get touched by it. And, you know, uh, you know, he's, he's a rock star who's addicted to it. Uh, there's a young girl who decides she's going, she steals from the drug dealers, but then she gets caught and they take it out on her. There's a, um, a cop who realizes that all of his counterparts are crooked because they're taking money from the drug dealer. And it kind of comes all to this, this, you know, dramatic crescendo at the end of how all these stories were tied together. And it actually ends up with a, uh, with a happy ending. And, uh, but it was, it was, a, it's a great film. It's really, is a great film. He, he, I think he is one of the better actors in India. You know, I would take him over SRK in anything that I've seen. I've never, I've never seen him give a bad performance. I've never, I've never seen him. He, um, the movies I've seen him in, especially Kabir Singh, which was not my favorite film, but his acting performance was amazing. He's very good at going to that dark place and going to that real and vulnerable place. And he has no problem playing that complete dirtbag jerk who is, um, you know, narcissistic, which sounds like the character you're describing in, in that film that you talked about. So we'll definitely have to check it out. When we review it, we'll definitely say this is a request from the professor. So that would be pretty awesome. But Shahid Kapoor, I mean, he definitely has some skill. SRK, I haven't seen a lot of his films. I reviewed Swatis because we got requested to watch that by a bunch of people. And I mentioned the review that it wasn't my favorite. That I didn't really like it that much. I didn't understand. There's a lot of cultural things I missed. I mean, it wasn't a bad movie, and he didn't do a bad job in it. But he seems like a like a more like a global superstar. He's a good looking guy. We just reacted to Fan, which looks like an interesting movie to me, where he plays both himself, the superstar, and the fan who's obsessed with him. Uh, have you seen that movie? Because that movie looks pretty interesting. If fan fan was good and fan was based on the uh, Robert De Niro movie. I mean, that's what they pulled it from. I don't know if you guys saw that where he was a fan yeah. of the, of the, the Wesley Snipes. Yeah. The yeah, yeah. yeah that, I mean, that's what they pulled it from and it was pretty good. People are yelling at me for ruining uh, <laughs> the job in the comments. Um, he was also <laughs> good in jab. We met a kind of a romantic comedy. Uh, my wife is fond of him. He's a good actor. Again, I've never seen a bad performance from him you just, at all. You just mentioned my kryptonite right there, man. Romantic ca uh, comedies. You want to talk about getting killed? I, I saw Brophy, right? And I forgot. Maybe I gave it like a P minus or a C. Bro. I hate romantic comedies. It's just, to me, romantic comedies actually make your job ha harder as a male because they set, <laughs> they do. They set the expectations so high for women. Like, this is not real. Like, this is not what happens, all right? Let's just be candid about it. And then my wife gets all these ideas in his head that, no, that's not really what's going to happen. In. There's not going to be all your friends waiting there at your surprise 30th birthday with, uh, you know, th th that kind of stuff doesn't happen or the unbelievable trip to Europe or whatever. And like Brophy, you know what I mean? It was a great, you know, it was a good, it was a good movie, you know what I mean? But it mm -hmm. was a love film and I crushed it, man. <laughs> I got crushed. And I was like, listen, I do not do romantic comedies. I hate having to sit in there. You know, don't give me the Julia Roberts, the hooker with the heart of gold. You know what I mean? Like pretty woman. <laughs> How often does that happen? Hookers do not marry billionaires. Let's be honest. That just doesn't happen. Maybe <laughs> Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders do, but not, you know, pulled right off the street. That doesn't happen. Come on. 
No. <laughs> That's like to be fair, Trump. I think he was a millionaire, not a billionaire. So come on, that makes it a little more realistic. <laughs> so he has to shop lower then? Is that what he is? He's got a quarter Dallas Cowboy. Cheerleader? Professor, what is this? Uh, what's this Gabro all about? Oh, what is uh, this? Uh, this reference Gabru? that we keep seeing. Uh, Gabru is uh, Gabru. So um, when I saw Undat uh, Punjab, which I think is, I, I think it is uh, the translation is flying high. The reference to being high all the time. When he was uh, when Shahid Kapoor is the rock star at one of the things he would get on stage and be like, God, Bruce, God, Bruce. And that was all, it's like, uh, all the good looking young guys or whatever, you know, like, I guess we would say studs or something back in the day. Um, and that's, that was what he yelled all the time to get his, his concert base all crazy. They would get all fired up. <laughs> and, yeah, and, and Abby always yells God, Bruce at me because I was stuck on that for a while after, after watching that film. <laughs> A little obsession there. <laughs> uh, yeah, Bay. Bay. He, he he's awesome. He's uh he's been a, a huge subscriber of ours, and uh, you know he's telling you to watch Dewar. Have you seen Dewar yet? We recently reviewed that one. That movie is awesome. A uh, what movie? Dewar. Oh yeah, it's yeah, a nineteen seventies Avenue Basham. Yeah. You check it out. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good film. That's a good film. That's a you know I think like a Bollywood top one hundred easy. Yeah, I personally liked it better than Chalet. I thought uh, Evan Abacha had a a better, I, I mean more more camera time on on that one. I think that his again because he plays a darker character in this one, not as comedic as the first one, and it had a darker tone. And th those are the kind of films I enjoy. So I, I definitely loved it. You would like Uda Punjab though. I mean, you want you want dark, dark film. That's a good one. Another really good Shahid Kapoor film is uh, Hater. Have you guys seen Hater? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that's that's really See, a really good film. Very talking artistic. about getting crushed. So on that one, we have a three person review on that one. Me gave my wife, and you know they loved it, and I liked it a whole lot. But for me, I, I I'm not a Shakespeare guy. I don't know anything about his his plays or anything. And so I think I gave it an A minus, an A minus, right? Which is like my my third highest grade. And man, the comment section was not happy really? with me. How could it not be the greatest of all time for you and all this kind of stuff? I'm like, I gave it an A minus. But for me, like I didn't connect to as much as I connected to other films. One of my favorites is actually Gully Boy uh, with Ranveer Singh. I absolutely love that movie. I talk about it all the time. And I put that one above Hater. And uh, a lot of our fan base did not like that. <laughs> uh, what movie? Gully Boy. Oh, hey, okay. uh, okay. Gully Boy. Okay. Yeah, Ron Veer Singh's a good actor too. I think he would play a great Joker. I think you could, you could, you could bring him into the DC universe, put him on some kind of crazy. You know, he always plays plays really good. You know, Shahid Kapoor too was in. Uh, you you guys seen Pad Vamonte? Pad Vamonte. Yeah, Pat Mavot. Yeah, we saw it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I always say it wrong. Um, yeah, and, and he played a good role in that too, I thought. Yeah, super dark, super dark. It's funny you mentioned DC Universe. In the back of Nick's studio, we have the DC and the Marvel. And even though Marvel's, again, we're we're counterculture, bro. <laughs> we're the DC fans, even though Marvel's a lot bigger or whatnot. And we, we want DC to survive. And, and just yesterday, they announced that Robert Pattinson is out as Batman. Did you hear that? Mm-mm. Yeah, bro. Apparently, he's still walking around. At like a, it's a, a rumor. Rumor. I can't find too much traction online for it. He's walking around at like a buck fifty, soaking wet. So I don't know. Like, <laughs> dude, he's out. They're not gonna use him. That's what I heard. And um, supposedly Ben Affleck's gonna be back. This, in. this is what this is one of the things I want to talk about. So I'm glad Gabe brought it up. I looked up this morning a little bit of web research to see how true it is, and I can't find anything. I just googled. Pattinson fired from Batman and all these articles about how he was almost fired from Twilight. And I'm like, I don't care about that nonsense. I want to know, is he fired from Batman? And there was one article that I can find from my, you know, the first 10 that it shows you from showbiz cheat sheet. And it says, uh, once again, it goes to how he was almost fired from Twilight, even though the, the article itself says almost fired from Batman. So this other article from a YouTube video from Ben Affleck talks about how he's possibly replacing Robert Pattinson, but I can't find any traction for it yet. So I'm not sure how accurate it is. But if it is accurate, what are your thoughts, first of all, on Pattinson being cast as Batman? 
professor. And then what are your thoughts on him being replaced if he is fired? Um, I, I didn't like him for Batman, quite honestly. Uh, when I saw that first promo picture, it looked like they were copying Daredevil, you know, from the the cowl. I didn't like the cowl. The color. I, I don't. I just. I don't. I don't find him as believable as Batman. Uh, and I think you know. You. I don't. I didn't like Ben Affleck as Batman. Um, I. I really. I really think you know. DC. DC should be destroying this. They really do. They got the greatest characters, the greatest villains of all time. Absolutely. And you know, the best DC movie that I've seen in the last six years was the Lego Batman. That was the best movie that I saw of theirs. The <laughs> that was actually movie. really good. Ouch. Suicide Squad, I got through maybe 40 minutes, dude, and I was just like, I can't do this, man. I, I just I can't watch it. This is terrible. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what the problem is over there. They they used to be able to do movies. Um uh, maybe they should just go like you know, when Marvel first started and they were just like, Let's get unknown people, let's just go find you know, Batman's so iconic because as soon as you name somebody from Batman, half the room hates him. You know what I mean? It's right, like right. as soon as it's like, we're going to have this person as Batman. You know, if they're a well-known actor, half the room's like, oh, he's going to be terrible. No, no, no. Yeah. Maybe they should just do like somebody, just an up-and-coming Batman. Here's the problem. Okay, DC wants to be Marvel because they saw their success. And they went away from what? really made DC Comics different than Marvel Comics, which was that it was a darker tone, all right? They were the first, you know, comic book to really kill somebody off, and, you know, multiple Robins have been killed off at this point, but they're not coming back. No magic elixir, none of that garbage. Like, they, you know, Batman got his back broken by Bane. All that darkness, all that tone, and then here's a perfect example. Right now, they're talking about the Snyder Cut's about to be released, and everybody kept saying, no, there is no Snyder Cut. There is a Snyder Cut of Justice League, right? Well, Halfway through the filming of Justice League, you replace them because you say it's too dark and you bring in uh, Josh Whedon, who had been fired from Marvel because they want that Marvel formula. That does not work for DC Comics. You know what I mean? It's not as campy. It's not as colorful. It's not as bright. And that's why one of my favorite DC films are Watchmen. I don't know if you've seen Watchmen, but it's got that dark tone and it's truer to the source material. You know what I mean? But uh, mm. I, 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 I got to disagree with you. I love Ben Affleck portrayal. Uh, Batman because it's the older, more grizzled Batman who's lost like two Robins already to Joker, and he's jaded, bro. And that and BBS, how he burns the the Batman um symbol into the criminals. You know, Batman doesn't kill, but in the comic books, he does start maiming people, bro. You know what I'm saying? And that's really the Batman that I wanted to see. That one that's been doing it for 20 years still sees he keeps losing allies, and nothing has changed. So now he starts taking more drastic, drastic measures. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I feel like when you when you look at Marvel, Marvel is the monsters. You know, when you look at DC, it's the gods. And what makes Batman unique is he's hanging with the gods. You know what I mean? He, 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 he's there, and he's a, he's a formidable. Doesn't matter if it's against Superman, against Lex Luthor. Doesn't matter. He's, he is like that, and and I just. I, I I think my own opinion is where DC went wrong is they looked at the Marvel success and you guys are teachers, right? Right. Right. I don't want to do the work. I'm going to just read the cliff notes. <laughs> I'm going to do the cliff note thing and I'm going to, maybe I can get through a couple of passes, but, but if you sit and stop and start getting me to go through deep to the material, I have no idea. I don't think they were willing to do the work to say, let's do three Batman movies. Let's do three Superman movies. Let's let's build these characters and then start intertwining them. I think they wanted to jump right into it, and and like Aquaman, dude. First of all, I'm just I hate to say this. Nobody liked Aquaman back in the day. I don't know. And now we bring Aquaman. When did he become a hillbilly? When you guys see him, he's like woohoo! It's like Aquaman's from Mississippi. I had no idea. Like hey, he hey. was just like out of control with this. I, I love myself. Jason Momoa's Aquaman. What's that? Aquaman is one of my favorite new DC characters. I love Jason Momoa. Yes, so he, he, we definitely disagree right there. I got a new, I got a new Aquaman hat. It's it's an orange one. It's over there on my wall, and I'm so proud of that hat. Aquaman was completely ridiculous, you know, before Jace Momoa's rendition of it in these Justice League movies. And, and I get some people don't love the my man and all that kind of stuff that he does. 
but he is just so perfect and so cool as Aquaman. Mm. I can't support you on that opinion. This guy is the man. I, I love what, what he's do you, doing. Is that a what do you, head are you rocking right now? That one. This the, is Black the, Panther. You got the Black Panther going on. I got my Rep Vegas hat on. Yeah, Rep Vegas. Yeah, I see you got the Sun Devils on today. They all black. Yeah, That's cool. I, I big Sun Devil fan. Well, I well here I am on my my first uh, boring reviews and uh, at odds over the DC universe. <laughs> <My apology. laughs> um, no, man, it's good to have that different opinion. Not at all. Wonder that, Woman no. was fine. They didn't screw up Wonder Woman. She was fine. Yep. I uh man, totally. you guys just got five hundred rupees, dude. Nice. Let's let's check out the super chat. Yeah, you are right. We wow. got from uh from no name ninety. I like yeah, that name. No name. Like a, Love you guys. Have been great source of entertainment during lockdown. Really appreciate it. Keep it going. Thanks so much, no name ninety. Thanks for that um generous uh donation there. And you know, we uh we appreciate being entertained. We know that the professor, he's busting out the videos during this quarantine as well. You know, it's 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 not that hard for us to do. It's not easy, but not that hard, but it's also definitely worth it. So we're glad you're checking it out. And I like the little artwork you got there, No Name. Not bad. Yeah, Thank you very much. Zombie-like. Very zombie-like. I, uh, I, th I think I tend to be more on the... Um, I tend to be more on the... Uh, I think the Marvel side of things. I'm looking forward to... Uh, Morbius coming out. I'm looking forward to Master of Kung Fu. That was one of my favorite comics when I was a kid. I, I would like to see them get Batman right. They did it with Christian Bale, right? You know, they killed it with Christian Bale. I didn't know who he was when he came out. When they said Christian Bale is going to be Batman, I was like, who? I didn't know who he was. <laughs> and and I and, and you I didn't know Christian Bale, huh? Wow. I said you didn't know Christian. Now, okay, to your credit, Christian Bale was not a big time actor. No, wait, wait, wait. For me, the reason why I knew about Christian Bale was because of the '92 film Newsies from Disney, the musical about the the Newsboys. You ever seen that before, Newsies? New, newsboys, the Christian rappers. <laughs> no, the movie's called Newsies. It's a Disney musical about these newsboys from the 1900s. No, no, no. I thought you meant like news boys take us to your leader. Anyways, it's no, not with it. <laughs> no, no, no. no. People selling newspapers. Oh, okay. Sorry. People selling newspapers in New York. It's uh, you should check it out. Christian Bale, he's like, I don't know, 17, 18. He's a little baby in that one, but he does a great job in that. But if you think about Batman, so let's talk about, I got the Batman shirt on today. Let's talk about Batman for a second. So all the actors that have played Batman, how many of those guys, besides Christian Bale, have been big time actors? Now, you can say Michael Keaton, but you would not think of Batman when you think of Michael Keaton before he took on the role. Right. You got Val Kilmer. You got um, George Clooney for crying out loud. You got Ben Affleck. You got Adam West. They haven't really had this superstar play Batman in the past. Michael Keaton, it worked out. Christian Bale it worked out. And you're right. He wasn't a big star before he took on the role of Batman. But. That's why I was so excited about Robert Pattinson. This guy came out of left field. The guy from Twilight, like Gabe said, 150 pounds. I want to see what he can do in a, in a young role of Bruce Wayne, not so much Batman, but Bruce Wayne. I was super excited about. So I'm hoping these rumors aren't true. Um, Professor, what do you think about the guy from Twilight playing Batman? Does that excite you um, or does that not excite you at all? Not really. I, I'll go. Sit, listen, I, I'm like any, everybody else. Or, you know, I will say all the Batman haters, I will say, this is terrible, this is terrible, this is terrible. And it comes out, I'll go see it four times. You know, they're like, oh, it was terrible, it was terrible. And then, you know, and then they'll make some other announcement about it. And then I'll be like, well, he was the best that we've ever had. Um, so I, with, what's Batman? It's, it's like, <laughs> Batman is like pizza or ice cream. It is really hard to screw it up. You really got to work really hard with it. And uh, so, you know, I'll go in and say uh, that's it's just going to be terrible. And then I'll watch and be like, it's Batman. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, definitely. I agree. Listen, Suicide Squad, which I know you killed and everybody has killed. Bro, that thing made $800 million. And trust me, I'm a school teacher. I could have not contributed that much to $800 million. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so did you finish it? That's all four times. <laughs> four times? Dude. And my, my favorite performance in there is the one everybody keeps killing is Jared Leto. Joker is one of my favorite characters. 
Joker mm-hmm. is one of my favorite characters. And to me, Joker's the same way. As long as it's dark, you really can't do it wrong. You know what I mean? And dude, I, I, I thought because of my comic book, extensive comic book background and knowledge, I, I was trying to explain to Nick, this isn't Joker, the Joker we know. This is the Jason Todd Joker that has already been killed and comes back to become Joker. You know what I mean? So that's really the, the, the dynamic. I thought that's what they were going, but like you said, they just throw it in all these movies and they don't build and set anything up and they don't take the time to build that story. Had people understood that this was not t- the original Joker, that this was Jason Todd that was killed by Joker and he's mad at Batman now. And that's why he's doing what he's doing. Then people would have been like, oh, it's a mix for a better, more cohesive story. But no, it's like you said, Cliff, Cliff Those version. You know what I mean? They give you enough to get a C plus on the test. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not to get that A. Simple as that. Um, yeah, I've never seen it all the way through. I um, I didn't think <laughs> Batman versus Superman was that bad. You see, this boy. Boy, wh- whatever I've done to, to Ibrahim, uh, he, he's he's not happy with me in the comments. I apologize. <laughs> no, I'm not. Sorry. I'm, I'm I like, I like how you I'm blocked him. We're, we're donated now. so he could unblock, and there he was. Um, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> well, Go, I tend to be conservative. I tend to be conservative. That's all, and I just I share my views on that. And sometimes, sometimes the younger liberals just don't uh, the the young fellas just don't appreciate it. Um, I don't know if you if you get this in your comments. I always get a kick out of it when when the Indians start fighting with each other in the comments. Is that do you ever come across that when somebody is telling you how much you saw? Sometimes, and then somebody comes to your defense, and then they start arguing. I get it all the time. I I always enjoy it. It's good. Anyways, I probably I'll just stop there. I don't want to encourage anybody to to hate on your page here. Um, no, no, no. You're right. The comment section. You know, you know, I've been told since the beginning, don't read the comment section, but I actually. I enjoy it because I want to know how people are reacting to our videos. I use it as an analytics tool to see how are they reacting? What are they thinking? If people say something nice, it's hard for me not to, you know, smile from that and say something back, but I have gotten in the trouble in the past and I'm working on it. And I think I finally turned the corner of when someone throws some hate our way, me not defending us. Now I won't go crazy and belligerent and whatnot, but I'll at least be like, Hey, you know, this or that, that's where I got in trouble in the past. That's where I realized it's just not worth it. That it, it's uh, there's no point of you know putting any time to that. But the I'm other like question you, I wanted to ask you about was I was, I was just saying, I'm like you, professor. I get a kick ahead, out yeah. of it, I get out of kick out of reading the comments. The funny ones are too when uh, somebody crushes me because they're like, Oh, you're fat and bald. Like, what's that got to do with my opinion? Crush my opinion. If you want to disagree, disagree with my opinion, that's fine. I know I'm fat and bald, bro. Trust me. Uh, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I got a mirror. I got a lot of mirrors around here. You know what I mean? So it's like, but if you can't attack the uh, the actual <laughs> argument or the opinion when they start attacking you personally, I'm like, what? 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 I, I, okay, yeah, I'm balding. It happens. Mel Patton Burrow, this is a problem in society. Sorry about that. <laughs> I, I uh, the my wife, uh, Tish, she'll get after me because I'll start trolling them. And uh, and she doesn't think I should be doing that. And it's it's kind of fun to troll sometimes. And and I I'm trying to work on that and not to troll uh, troll the haters. It's fun to do. Um, now, um, have you guys ever heard of um, tried and refused? Tried they're and refused. they're a, a Hindi Bollywood channel. They're probably got I'm gonna guess six or seven. Oh yes, 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 yes. Them- About the reaction. Um- they did the video on the reactions, right? About how Westerners are reacting. They didn't like it. Yeah. So there was also was another right? channel called Four Minute Films, maybe a year or two ago, and they had a big video about. I guess I would call it, you know, the white lash. This that they're predicting that at some point in time, India is just going to kick us to the curb. Um, you know, as like a form of nationalism. Um, did did you did you guys see the jabby exchange with that channel? Did you see that? And if you did, what were your thoughts on it? I didn't, I didn't get to see the video. I heard about it, and then he took it down before I had a chance to check it out. Someone on Instagram let me know about it, um, but I didn't see it. I did see Jabby's post, his text post on his community page saying, you know, I had to take down it, and I have nothing but love for this guy moving forward and whatnot, but I didn't get to see the exchange. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it was um, – uh, that video I thought was pretty uh, – you know, I, I, did you watch the video, the original video? 
Yes. I watched yes. the video from Try and Refuse, yeah. So as I'm watching the video, I'm like, oh, we didn't appear in it at all. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's probably the wrong attitude to have, but I was excited first of all not to be uh, you know, in in the drive by there. But I was I was surprised at like just the like the gloves were off by this channel. I was like, wow, wow. And and I think good for Jabby because I think Jabby when you just said I'm just any anything I do to respond to this is just going to feed into it, and uh, you know, yeah, which is unfortunate. Um, but I, I was, I have was, you ever reached out to Gabby? Have you ever contacted him? Is he contacting back to you? Or um, have you ever had any kind of conversation with him? Yeah. Yeah. When I first started, when I first started, I got, uh, he would show up in my comments and, um, and he, uh, emailed me and, and, and had gave me his phone number and called him. And we had a, a conversation, um, a couple times, possibly collaborating together at the time. But but it's I think as my personality unfolds online, um, it's just not a good move for him, you know. Because the first thing, if you if you add me into with him, the first thing I do is divide the room, you know. As you can <laughs> see in your comments, there's a group of people who are just going to hate me as soon as I walk in, and it's like, and that's hard to do if you don't if you're going to be constantly if you want like I want everybody to love me, you know. That's kind of hard when somebody comes in is like. Okay, yeah, that part of the room right over there sucks, and then you know people get upset by that, and uh, so yeah, I mean, and there have been times that I've asked him questions. Now, the copyright issue that you ran into on your cricket channel, I think the only problem that you're catching is because it's such a small channel. Um, because I I I started getting copyright strikes, and Javi was the one who he actually went and talked to a lawyer about like what what is. Is this does this work as as you know of um, fair use? And a lawyer told him yes. And that was I got that verbiage from Jabby. Jabby gave me that verbiage. And every time that I've used it in my appeal process, and I, I think I probably had forty of them, that they they say oh, okay. But I, it has to be the size because I started a, a second channel. Just to kind of I use as my throwaway channel. It's like my 38 special channel that I don't want, you know, trace back to me. So if I try something new, I put it on there and see how killed I get before I put on movie community college. And I got a copyright strike on that. And that one only had at the time like 400 subscribers. And they gave me the same response you got. I don't understand what you're asking. And by the way, this is the last time we're really going to look at this. We can't help you. And you're like, too. So I, I think it just has to do with the size of the channel personally. Yeah, so there's more to that copyright story that I didn't get a chance to explain to you. So the first strike we got, and what Professor is talking, we got a strike on our Cricket for Americans channel, our smaller channel, just like you're talking about. We started a second one to kind of explore and do more risky stuff because it's a smaller channel. And um, we got a copyright strike on a video about AB to Billiards, which I knew we were going to. And I sent some text that the professor shared with me to, you know, combat these copyright strikes. And they sent back a response to YouTube, at least did, or someone from YouTube did saying, we don't understand what you're saying. The strike is going to stand. Now, on our Born Reviews channel, we got another copyright strike for um, for another cricket video on defense or something, because there was too many minutes of the clips from a match with India versus whoever they were playing. And I use that same verbiage. And that one, um, they didn't retract it right away, but it, YouTube understood that one yeah. and they said okay we'll process it and you'll wait the 10 or 14 days and it went away after 14 days um we got another strike on another video that one i contacted the people themselves and they were really cool about it, and they took it off a few days later so we've gotten three strikes so far your verbiage has worked to two times that one time like you said maybe it was just a smaller channel yeah. they didn't understand yeah. what was going on but we, we still appreciate yeah. the help because it's gotten out of trouble yeah. twice already yeah. and that, that's that was jabby's doing so i don't um i don't you know uh the times that I've talked to Jabby, he's always been gracious and kind and giving of his time. And, uh, and I appreciate that because it, I would have been out of this channel a long time ago. Um, the other thing that was happening too is I was getting copyright strikes like crazy and they were actually being traced back to the Los Angeles area that, you know, it would give you some kind of Indian name and it would, uh, when we would trace it back, it, it was just basically haters of the page of your channel. Like, I can't stand you guys. I'm going to say, you know, contact YouTube and say, this is my stuff, you know, 
copyright strike them. And then when you went through the appeal process, you never heard anything back from them because it was, you know, they really couldn't prove anything. And, and that's the wow. big thing with the copyright strikes is force them to come sue you. And, um, you know, it's not going to happen. Now, one of the things I had a problem with was uh, Penn Studios. I was doing Maha Rabat. Maha Barat reviews, and they were at first they would get copyright claimed, which I'd okay, okay, whatever, I don't care, it's your material, do what you want to with it. Yeah, then they were blocking it. Were you going, Gabe? Hey, Gabe, can you get me a drink while you're up, bud? <laughs> and they were blocking the videos, <laughs> and then they were threatening to strike me. And so I just stopped everything and I did a video just saying, I can't do these Maha Barat anymore, this is a problem. And, uh, dude, the viewers were so awesome. They blew up their inbox, this Penn Studio inbox, and just said, this is ridiculous. We hate you. And I got contacted by the head of the studio, like, hey, we need to talk. Like, let's try to figure this out quickly. And basically, he said, uh, you're using, like, the whole episode for your reaction. If you can keep it down to nine minutes, we, we won't claim anything. You know, just take a portion of it. And uh, and so it was. It worked out well that way. But but Mahabharat is like it's just That's way awesome. too long. It with Ramyan, and uh, so I'm going to finish uh, Ramyan first, which I think is 86 episodes, and I just finished 71, and then I'll go over to Mahabharat. <laughs> Man, so you did every you've done every single episode you've watched so far, a review on it. Yeah, yeah, and I've been doing it for probably a year and a half, maybe two years, doing a review on it, and. Um, but yeah, the copyright strikes can get get tricky, and a lot of people, it's like, I think it's just the size of the channel. Like, if you're at a certain threshold, they don't care. They're just like, yeah, whatever. Because I ran into that too with my smaller, my throwaway channel. Yeah, we, um, you know, I totally forgot what I was gonna say, <laughs> but that's that's crazy. That I mean, that's awesome that your fan base, you know, went to bat for you and ask them to, to help you out and they respond with okay just do nine minutes or less the people in the odd in the the this guy hiram in the comment section is asking me to say a sentence in hindi i started lessons in hindi because i wanted it to maybe start to understand this language i'm watching these movies in and my lessons haven't gone so well but i have learned the word sunye which means please listen it's like a respectful way to say please listen and i've learned ka which is the way you want to ask a question and Angrisi means English, but I'm not really good at a sentence yet. So those are a few words that I know um, in Hindi. So hopefully that'll suffice. I'm going to let this cat out of the room and I'll be right back. Uh, Abby says I'm a punk. What's up, Gabru? Abby, what are you doing, dude? It's cool to see. Uh, it's cool to see people from my channel here. I always get it. It's nice. You know what I mean? It's nice because it's a sense of community. Yeah, definitely. That's how we actually got turned on to your channel. People were like, hey, you guys got to go check them out. And, you know, again, making it a community, it, it's all love. Now, let me ask you a question. You say you have a son that's uh, already in college. How old is your son? Uh, he's, he's out of college now. He is going to be 25 this year. And um, he's a reporter uh, for the Arizona Republic here in town. Cool. And, um, you know, so he, he's a lot of the Indians will ask me to do videos with him. But he's he's out breaking stories. He's like an investigative reporter. So he's like, I would love to have him on. I'm I'm sure he he did one video for me once when the, the Daredevil uh, Netflix series dropped. He was a big Daredevil fan. My, uh, uh, Nick, nephew. Somebody wants your Mountain Dew. Somebody's asking you to get them a Mountain Dew. <laughs> uh, you know what? That's why I got I got to make sure I got the I, I was thirsty. I was parched. I was parched. But um. My nephew, he plays right now for the Minnesota Blue Jays, right? It's a D2 college. And he will, him, both him and my son, my son plays out in West Virginia. And uh, they both play baseball. And they were trying to play for the Sun Devils. So they went over there, you know, walked the campus or whatnot. And my nephew was player of the week twice, was getting ready to go play in Canada. And he, this was his freshman year here up in uh, Minnesota. And dude, right in the middle of the season, the whole COVID-19 thing started. So now he's going to have to go back for his second year because he was in, he was just about to play his way into going to Arizona and playing for the Sun Devils, man. So it sucks, mm -hmm. but it, it is what it is. You know what I mean? I mean, it's affected a lot, a lot of people. 
I keep saying to my own family, guys, we're blessed, you know, as, as an educator, my wife's also an educator. We're still getting our checks. We're paying our bills. We're feeding our family. Luckily, no one close to me has gotten uh, a sick, uh, sick and died. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't know a couple people who've gotten sick, but they've recovered. So, you know, we're, we're lucky compared to the other, what is it? 95,000 at this point here in the United States that have lost their lives to COVID-19. And I think unemployment's up to four point what 4.5 4.8 million people so i'm just blessed and happy that you know we're we're you know does it, does it suck having to be indoors and not being able to do things and my my nephew missing out on an opportunity to go play in arizona yeah but it could be worse so i was telling him about Renee. i'm getting some hate from, from my cat right here is saying dogs are better than stupid cats i mean come on man what's with the hate with the cats yeah they, like, they said your cow. cat's being naughty was your cat being naughty <laughs> <laughs> I could hear the cat meowing. She was just meowing like crazy. She's a spoiled cat. Mm. So I want to switch gears a little bit because this is a topic that I want to do a video on, but I wasn't really sure how our audience would really care about it. But the Snyder Cut. Okay, so there's news about the Snyder Cut where HBO Max, which I guess is owned by Warner Brothers, new streaming service. They have decided to release the Snyder Cut Next year on HBO Max, they're going to put $30 million into this project to finish the editing, to finish the visual effects I'm hoping for. He's even talking about wanting to do some reshoots. I am super excited for it. I love DC. I don't love the movies as much, obviously, because they're not nearly as good. Justice League, I love that movie when it came out. And then every time I watch it again and again, I thought, you know, this is actually not that good. This is not that good. This is actually garbage. So I'm excited to see how they're going to do it. I think it takes a whole bunch of cojones by WB to admit they made a mistake and to produce this. Obviously, it's for subscribers and for money, but I think it's awesome they're willing to put $30 million. I want to know, what are your guys' opinions about the Snyder Cut? Professor, I'll defer to you because uh, my answer is probably going to be long-winded. <laughs> um, I, I, First of all, uh, I keep seeing this, uh, do I like Pink the movie? Uh, with Amitabh Bakshan. Have you guys seen Pink? Yes. That was probably yeah. the first time in a Bachchan movie yes. we saw. As a matter of yeah. fact, I, I was like, who is this creepy yes. old dude? Because <laughs> at the beginning, remember, he's got he's just like stalking her. And I was like, who is this creepy old dude? And then to, when, once he gets into We the mentioned movie, our, in our review that we thought he was a horrible actor. Like, what was he doing at the beginning of the movie? And then at the end of the review, we said, yes, this guy's an awesome actor because we understood what he was doing. But at first, we're like, he's just standing there like doing nothing. Like, this guy's trash. And, you know, the comment section, I love that comment that we made. <laughs> okay. um, I think I think with like with Zack Snyder, um, you know, I thought he did a good job uh, with. Um, oh, sucks getting old. Uh, you, you made a reference to the Watchers. Watchmen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did a great job with Watchmen. the Watchmen. But it was pretty much frame from frame from the from the novel. I mean, it was. Yeah. If you if you take something that's already perfect, it's like don't mess it up, you know. Right. And so he went frame by frame. It was fine. I just saw three hundred for the first time during um, uh, right after I watched Groundhog Day. Three hundred was then. I said I've never seen three hundred. I watched three hundred, and um, I, you know I've seen Sucker Punch. And and I I I think the problem that he's running into with Batman v Superman is the same thing that Ang Lee ran into with the Hulk. You get this idea of like, I, I want to take the comic and make it look like the comic and present it to the audience. But I think the audience has grown in sophistication where they really like the idea of it being grounded in reality. I think that's why Christian Bale was so successful. It was, it wasn't a, a kind of campy Batman. I mean, Michael Keaton was, but Christian Bale just changed everything. I think when he gave that performance, because it was so, you know, the Dark Knight, and it was so kind of gritty for the time. Um, I would, you know, I would watch it. I could tell you, like, I think Zack Snyder was the wrong choice to do this, uh, the Batman movies. I agree. Um, but again, like I said earlier, it's still Batman. It's like this, their pizza is terrible. I hate their pizza, and you're like, dude, it's all you can eat, three ninety nine. Well, okay, I can probably force a couple <laughs> slices down. You know, I'll force it down. 
So I I will say this is probably a waste of money, blah, blah, blah. But will I watch it? Oh, yeah, I'll watch it. I'll watch it, and I'll watch the Zack Snyder cut, and then, you know, be like, ah, I see, I told you. Oh, wait, wait, what's that? So I think, you know, I... Um, I don't know. Why, why doesn't DC just... It's like they're throwing good money after bad. Just start over. You know what I mean, like start over, dude. You, you know what? I, I agree with you there. They should probably just start over. I think they they did a very good job with Joker, for instance. And mm -hmm. as a standalone film, Joaquin Phoenix was amazing in that film. So you really could reboot the whole thing. But and I, I still think they may do that. But now that they're going back to the Snyder Cut, I think it will still be better than Josh Whedon's version because Josh Whedon tried to throw too much my mans and stuff like that that was straight out of, yo, that's straight out of D, uh, uh, Marvel. That's not a DC. That's not who Aquaman, you know what I mean? And to your point earlier, you know, Aquaman's not hellbilly, right? Where are all these campy jokes coming from? You can mm -hmm. tell what was Josh Whedon's influence there and what was um Zack Snyder's influence there and because I'm such a huge comic book fan I know I'm in the minority there so I don't mind when they're going panel by panel uh from the source material because at least you're not ruining it with throwing right. your own spin on something you know what right. I'm saying but I will say though that what's the what was the when everybody thinks about the Josh Wheel Justice League the first thing they think about is Superman doesn't look right the whole movie he, he looks like a a pedophile, you know, he's got that crazy smile on him that you can tell it's like, you know, superimposed on there. And people were more focused on that than on the movie. So give it, get in the uh, director's original vision, I think will be much better. Somebody also um, mentioned the David Ayer uh, Suicide Squad. This, when studios meddle and they start changing the, direct the director's original vision, they mess it up, okay? Because those guys are not directors. This is they play it for a test audience and their executives make a choice. Let the original uh, uh, version, what the director who, who you hired to do it, let that play. Um, case in point, I said I loved it. J the little Jared Leto we did get as Jason Todd slash Joker. Well, he said there was a whole backstory to it. He said he filmed enough um, footage so that it could have his own, he can make his own Joker movie out of it. And they played literally, I counted it, 18 minutes. That's how long he's in the movie, 18 minutes. And they marketed it as him being this big part of it. You know what I mean? So that was, again, studio interference. So I'm excited to see a Snyder Cut version for that reason alone. What was his original vision? And I know it's going to be a lot darker, mm. more uh, mm, yeah. source material. You know, I I'm excited to see it too, but I don't know. I don't know if we can call the Justice League movie just Joss Whedon's version because this guy came in, you know, in the middle of the operating table, you know, the operation, so to speak, and had to, you know, make do with what he had. And he had a few days of reshoots and we just need you to fix what this mess is. And so I would have loved to see Joss Whedon's full version of just this league if he was able to go from beginning to end the thing i can't wait for this version to come out is so that we can stop you know debating what was snyder what was whedon we can see snyder's version and we can say okay all that stuff was snyder's version and all that stuff was whedon's um i thought what whedon did coming in the 11th hour trying to salvage this movie trying to deal with the whole mustache nonsense and reshoots i thought what he did was very admirable and again the movie's not my favorite as far as dc goes but I, I think that it's going to be cool to see what happens. I have read like a, a synopsis on what Zack Snyder's vision was for the rest of the Justice League movies. And I, I can't say I was blown away by it, but we'll see how it comes out. Uh, I'm a huge DC guy. I love the villain Dark Sea, Dark Side. I can never say it right. I'm hoping he makes an appearance because he was supposed to in the original um, version of Snyder's vision. But real quick, let's switch gears again. Professor, we got a question. Do you like cricket? Yes. How long did it take you to understand you cricket? <laughs> Do I understand cricket? Uh, I'm uh, learning. How, how long did it take you to understand cricket? Oh, I, I don't understand it fully, but it was probably a year of watching, I would say. Um, my, uh, I tend to be more on the, the, the IPL cricket where I like the idea of when they do the draft and following players and teams. Um, my team is the Shania super Kings because Donnie's on it, even though he's, he is, you know, getting, getting up there in age. Um, 
Netflix did a good, they had a series on, on cricket where they followed all the IPL teams for a season and it was on the Mumbai Indians. So you got to see things happening through the Mumbai Indians eyes. And um, it was, it was really good. We enjoyed it. Me and my wife watched it and it was good. You start learning about different aspects of it. It's, it's, it's trippy to watch though, as an American with baseball, because there's no foul. Everything's in play. You know, somebody like Wade Boggs or Ishiro could just be up there like forever, just hitting everything behind you. It doesn't matter. Just I'll hit it behind me. I'll follow it off. I'll do whatever. Um, but, man, I, I tell you what, like a sixer or a home run, whatever, dude, when you see it crushed, you know, dude, is when that thing comes off, you're like, ooh, that's going, that's going out. You know, I never thought about that, but some of the great baseball players that had just this uncanny ability to put the bat on the ball. Again, you said Ichiro. People don't realize how talented Ichiro was. This guy total had, he's in the Hall of Fame in America for having 2,000 hits. And he had like 2,000 hits before he even came over from Japan. This guy's a monster, 4,000 career hits. A guy like uh, Charlie Hussle, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, Vladimir Guerrero, these guys that had the un imagine if it was just no foul in baseball, no foul territory, kind of like Ooh. cricket, and you could just put the ball in play. Holy cow, that those guys would be yeah. scary! But, um, yeah. it took us a while to understand. The only reason I asked that question is because before we started the uh, the review cricket, and somebody asked us to review cricket, the only thing we knew about cricket was, um, Remember, I don't know if you remember the 1989 Ninja Turtle movie where he it was Casey Jones <laughs> and Raphael. He's like, cricket, nobody understands cricket. You got to know what a cricket is before you understand cricket. And that's all we knew. We, we had heard it, but I had never actually watched it. And it's taken, Nick is a monster. You don't understand. This dude is humble. How much do work this guy puts into not just cricket, not just the channel, but researching. I mean, he's my mentor in school as well. And when I tell you he learned something, he absolutely learns things to the fullest degree. He puts in way more time as far as research than I do. But he understood it within the first, I'd say, month or so. He delved into it where I'm still like trying to catch up. It was like, wait, what just happened here? What just happened there? But um, bro, with sports being gone right now, if they would put some live cricket on, dude, I, I don't care if it was the IPL or if it was T20, give me the five day version. I'm stuck home. Put it on. Put on. I, I watch NASCAR, bro. All right. And NASCAR is not the most exciting, but it was something on TV. This Sunday, I'm going to watch the Tiger Woods and Peyton Manning. And who else is it? It's uh, Tom Brady, who I hate. I think everybody hates Tom Brady, unless you're a Patriots fan. <laughs> they're golfing but guess what it's sports and it's on espn so i'm gonna watch it okay i don't care put it on tv oh sports we need you back so bad so bad hmm. yeah yeah i um i uh i don't know i've i found myself uh kind of in this this midst of the pandemic it, it, t for myself, it just seems like a lot of stuff just doesn't really matter anymore. You know, you get family, your friends, a couple things that you like. I I used to, well, I I am a Raiders fan, right? I'm a Raiders fan, but there was a period of time, maybe about twenty years ago, that I I had uh, I opened up a sports memorabilia business in Phoenix, and I started selling jerseys and stuff. And what I found myself doing is when I would get a good deal on Raider stuff, I would just keep it. There, there's no profit in that. So it'd be like, you know, I would be like, oh, Bo Jackson? Yeah, I'll keep that. Yeah, okay, whatever. And then I had to force myself to divest myself of, of that. And so I did. And then it's 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 always um, hard to get back into it. I, I try to root for the local teams, but, but Arizona's not very good. Uh, what you know? What has gone on with the Suns? They used to be a proud franchise, and now it's just like ding dong school. I don't, I don't know what it is. The Cardinals are kind of, they're hard to follow. It's like they start making progress, and then all the key decision makers get arrested for DUIs, and then we kind of start over. Uh, you know, it, it's true. I mean, it's just like if what's going on in headquarters, the Cardinal headquarters, where they just like. Knock it off, dude. Yeah, we start like, oh, nine and six, baby. Here we go. Oh, crap. Somebody got a DUI. Uh, it's going to set us back three years. We can't figure it out. Um, I'm uh, I'm excited. You know, 
the other thing too about being a Raiders fan, I hate Tom Brady, right? I hate him for that 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 game. But one of the things that just would really bother me back when L. Davis was alive was, oh, you got a fast guy, go deep. You got a fast guy, go deep. Like everybody's on to the forward pass, Al. Like, can we, you know, that was great back in 1962 when everybody was still like, we're going to run it through the tackles. It's just, I don't care if it's third and seven, just go up the middle. We'll catch him by surprise. And I just, I just, just so much of it, you know, and then you look at like the Golden Knights, the Golden Knights, what the heck, dude? Like they just show up and they're in the playoffs. And then you look at the Coyotes, it's like, what are you guys doing, dude? What do you, what? the heck is going on in Glendale? You guys are just like, I don't know, man. These Golden Knights are pretty good. I was actually at a Golden Knight game. Oh, I, it wasn't a playoff game. I was at a Golden Knight game last time I was in Vegas. And I was there uh, with my wife. My wife likes hockey and my son likes hockey. And he and they brought my daughter-in-law. And um, my daughter-in-law had never seen hockey before. And, um, and I don't know the rules of hockey. All I know is when I go to a game, it's fun, dude. I, the first hockey game I went to was a Phoenix Coyote game. And I apologize because I've just gone off the rails of what no, we were I, talking about. I'm enjoying I'm so the sorry. Bro, I'm enjoying and, the uh, it, was a, it was a Phoenix Coyote game, and they were playing the Buffalo Sabres. And the Buffalo Sabres had a player uh, named Satan was his last name, but everybody who was American would say Satan. And he was going up and down the ice, and all you would hear these cheers was, come on, Satan, go, Satan, go, or somebody like, please stop Satan, will somebody stop Satan? And it was just like so utterly bizarre and fun to listen to, and then fist fights broke out. So we were, we were at, the, we were at the, um, the Golden Knights game, and fights are breaking out and people are yelling. And, and I don't know what my sweet, innocent daughter-in-law thinks of all this. I always try to be on my best behavior when she's around. And afterwards, uh, I said, what did you think? Did you like it? She said, I liked it a lot. And I said, what did you like most about it? And she said, in, in the, have you guys been to a Golden Knights game? We when they that. do the shame, when they she like carrot top being like shame shame she thought that was hilarious and she liked the fighting and and it's just like what you guys just get a team and it's in the playoffs it's like you know that ain't gonna happen with the raiders how many of them are getting arrested already in vegas i mean like whose idea what let's let's take the oakland raiders do you remember when they drafted sebastian janikowski and he got caught with date rate drugs he's a kicker like and i remember lincoln kennedy the left tackle being like Sounds like a Raider kicker to me. You're going to put that in Las Vegas? Oh, come on. This is going to be scandal after scandal, dude. It's going to be like if I was a junior college guy, I would be ready. I would have my tape ready because you know you're going to get called up. Arena guy, whoever, if you're a CFL guy, you're going to get your opportunity because people are going to be going to jail in Vegas. These Raiders are going to go to jail. It's unfortunate. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Nick. I'm sure you had it. I apologize. That was classic. That was the best rat ever. <laughs> See, I'm, I usually do the same thing on our channel. I understand your pain because I'm a Knicks fan, bro. I'm from New York. And there's all oh, the pain, the suffering of being a Knicks fan. And Nick should actually be more bitter because he's a Padres fan. All right. But he's not. He's, he's a happy, happy, happy go lucky Padres fan. And I'm hey, just don't happy. Don't laughing there, Professor. <laughs> That got the biggest laugh from him right there. Me, a Padres fan. Holy cow. Don't forget Chargers fan, too, if you want to add to the yuck yucks. But, you know, Rick, Nick has this, <laughs> there this very optimistic view of it. I'm like you, bro. Just darkness. It's so bad. It's so dark. But I enjoy putting myself through this suffering for whatever reason. But I did think about the same thing um, when they announced they were bringing a football team here to Vegas. Because when we had the NBA – all-star game here in Vegas, it was pandemonium, bro. It was inc it was crazy. And I know we got the Golden Knights, but the hockey crowd's a little bit different than an NBA or an NFL crowd. What NFL? Oh my gosh. Some of those games are gonna. I will say this though, bro. They have priced out a lot of the quote unquote uh uh what do you call it? The the black hole fans, the, those guys that you know they try Raider Nation. The tickets are ridiculous. The 
the license, not the ticket, the actual license for each ticket was a thousand dollars. My brother in law, myself, a couple of us went in on two tickets, a thousand dollars just for the seating licenses. All right, not to mention how much you're paying per game per seat, it's insane. So, a lot of people aren't going to be able to afford to go to those games. The Tom Brady game, just to let you know, right now, nosebleed seats are like 450, right? 450, bro, it's insane. So, you know, I mean. Maybe it'll still be some of that riffraff, but not as bad as when it was in Oakland. But, they will uh, be, dude, they, when you're on parole, dude, you can't leave the state. They ain't leaving <laughs> Oakland. They, they'll be busted for parole violations. There's no way the black hole's gone, dude. And hey, what was with Brian Giles when he ran naked as a Padre across the field? You remember that? There's these stories about Brian Giles when he got no. traded to the Padres and he would start running around the field naked. I never understood that. I never I heard those Pirates. stories. Obviously, I remember Brian Giles. He got traded from the Pirates. Um, he, uh, you know, he was for the Padres at that time. They were that was their lowest time. They they were such they were more garbage than they are right now. So Brian Giles was like their superstar at that time, and they were riding his uh, you know his stardom as much as they could. I was at a game in San Diego when they were playing against the Cardinals and. You know, the Padres in the 2000s, last time they went to the playoffs, they lost the Cardinals two years in a row. So we hate the Cardinals. But they were playing against the Cardinals. It was a one-run game. They were down by one run. It was the bottom of the ninth with two outs. Brian Giles walks, gets on first base. And I'm sitting there on the first base side, hoping for some kind of a rally. And the batters got like a 3-1 count or something. Brian Giles ends the game by being picked off off first base. He wasn't even trying to steal. He was just – he fell asleep being six feet away from the bag. They threw it to first base, and he doesn't even move, and they tag him out. That's my Brian Giles story. As a fan, you know, we appreciated what he did as far as ticket sales for those few years he was there. But he, he was definitely a disappointment. I don't know about the running naked thing, though. Yeah. I just remember being picked well, off at I mean, first You had first Dave Winfield and had Ozzy Smith. I just – you know, it's just like, Wow. <laughs> Yeah, they um, had Ozzie Smith. Charged. They had him for like two or three years, and they traded him to St. Louis because they figured he'd be a bum. Terrible. And look how that worked out. They had Robbie Alomar for a few years, and they traded him away to Toronto to get um, – was it Sheffield or Joe Carter? No, no, Sheffield. No. To get Sheffield, I'm pretty sure. No, no, they got that Sheffield for – from, so, anyways, they traded for they traded him away to get somebody. Oh, Tony Fernandez, that's who it was. Tony Fernandez and someone else, and they didn't keep him for that long. They had Gary Sheffield for half a year, and he won the batting title. And then they traded him because they didn't want to pay him. I mean, you, you can't make this stuff up. Uh, Terry can't. Kennedy, Terry <laughs> Kennedy. That, that's as much of a rant as you're gonna get out of Nick. Real quick, it, uh, at 943, look at PR's comment. It says, uh, "Is it 943?" Um, no, I think it was before that. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, 942. Guys, talking about sports, you should check out Kabaddi. We have checked out Kabaddi. We're going to uh, drop off, drop um, a review. Talk about a sport that I did not understand, bro. I'm <laughs> like, what's going on here? There, there's a, there's a, like a professional Kabaddi uh, league, and Amitabh Bakshan's son, I think, owns one of the teams. And uh, would it, I don't remember you guys if you played this when you were a kid, but like Steal the Bacon. It's like steal the bacon tag and wrestling, dude. It's it's where was that when we were like seven, dude? We would just Whoa. be doing that all day. We yeah, Gabe was right. We were confused trying to understand the rules in that video, and you'll see that reaction in a few days. But it reminded me when it first started, I thought, okay, this is like capture the flag type of a situation, but it's not capture the flag. Um, steal the bacon might be the closest rendition to it from something that we played. But yeah. I mean, I, I still don't understand the sport. But it's it's super popular, which is just you know crazy to me because I don't understand it at all. But you know that's not saying much. Um, I get that somebody's talking about um, uh, Ramyan in there. Uh, what have I learned from Ramyan? I'll tell you what I've learned about Ramyan. What I need to be, I need to be a better devotee of Jesus. You know, when I watch these things, the piety, and I I I really need to be a better devotee of Christ. I think. That, that's what I've learned. To, I've walked away from. And when you look at the story of Ravana in there, here's a guy who's just wrapped up in his own sin so much that he can't he can't break free. So that's 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 what I've learned for that. Sorry, guys. I, I see that comic has popped up a few times. I wanted to answer it. 
No, no, cool, 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 bro. Uh, you know, it's funny. Um, I don't know if you caught on TV. They're talking about um, um, re- not not necessarily um, completely doing away with, but they're going to start relaxing some of the uh, restrictions nationwide. And one of them were, were for houses of worship because during this time, people be- are really depressed and they just need some prayer in their life. It doesn't matter what religion you are, or what denomination you are. You know what I mean? Just to have something to help ground you during these really difficult times and you know it's it's something i agree with man because i just did not realize the amount of stress people always makes it sound yeah quarantine was cool day one day two day 33 groundhog day same thing over and over and you you know it it gets to you you know what i mean so i definitely think that's a good idea obviously you got to protect yourself when you go in there but you know, my own family, you know, my wife kids, they're getting cabin fever, just being locked up all the time or whatnot. And it, it, it's definitely a lot of people out there. I heard about how suicide rates are going up and divorce rates are actually going up. You know what I mean? You spend a lot of time with a significant other. You, you realize they kind of know me a little bit. <laughs> you know what I mean? So well, they're probably yeah. used to working two or three jobs and never seen one another. And now they know who that their spouse is. They're like, I don't want any of this. <laughs> That's hilarious. But yeah, did, so. did you guys see Trump come out and drop the hammer yesterday where he said houses of worship will be open this weekend? If not, we're going to get involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We'll That's see what, what happens. That's what yeah, I was yeah, we'll see what about. happens with that. We'll, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. Goat racing. You guys get into any goat racing or crab races? <laughs> You know, we, we haven't got a reaction video for that one yet. I'm not sure about how many leagues there are in the world for goat racing. I will say but, this. Uh, in Dominican it's Republic, it's in, the, in Dominican Republic, um, which is part of the Caribbean, okay, cockfighting is a big thing. You know what I mean? And some of these guys pay big money for these roosters, bro. Big money. And I remember attending one, obviously, here in the States, that but those things, just like dogfighting, would not be allowed. But uh, seeing animals, I think the closest thing we have here, um, if if not horse racing, is dog racing. You know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, watching a cockfight is very, very interesting, especially since it's basically to the death, you know? And um, that's when I was like, wow, it's a different world out here. Should we do that with reaction channels, reactions to the death? We come up with a pairing system. You know, you can see it. Get a seat. Have like a seating chart. Kind of situation? And then we just react to the death. The last person standing <laughs> who can do the... Um, favorite fe- uh, Indian actress, they're asking. I'm going to say it changes depending on... Who- Taboo. I like Taboo. She's one of my favorites. Topsy. Yeah, yeah good. How about you, Topsy. Nick? You know, I, I definitely am a huge fan of Tabu as well. Um, I'm not sure if it's just because she's a beautiful woman or because she's a good actress. I'm not sure. Yeah, that didn't I, have anything uh, I think to do with it. Panu, obviously. <laughs> I think Topsy Pandu is probably, if I'm on the spot, you know, no chance to really get a list out. I would definitely probably say her. It's funny because when we saw Pink, I wasn't too impressed with her in that movie. But then we saw Battle, and then I saw um, Game Over. Then I saw some other things that she was in, and I'm like, oh, wow, she actually really can act. Um, and she's, you know, she's really good at what she does. I think obviously, um, oh, Karina Kapoor, she's really good in the things that I've seen her in. And, um, I know I'm leaving someone out, but I like that taboo choice. That was, she's good. Uh, favorite. Nobody likes taboo. They said, that's what I am legend. Says. Wow. Nobody likes taboo. Well, there you go. Favorite Indian movie? Which yeah, it's Indian interesting movie? sometimes when when these comments generalize. But I'm mm-hmm. not sure if nobody likes because here's two people that do. But yeah, really. who knows? Favorite Indian movie is so it, it's tough, man. Because recency bias uh, makes me want to say that Super Thirty is. As educators, you see that we'll do a lot of reviews on movies that have to do with education. You know, Three Idiots is definitely up there with me. I love Amir Khan. He's an unbelievable actor. I mean, the guy's a, you know, he he's a perfectionist. I really enjoyed him. Um, man, favorite, if it's not, it's tough. I recently bias wants to say Super 30 because just emotion, so emotional I got with that film. But it would still have to be either Three, three Idiots. I mean, 
Yeah, I would say it's either it's got to be between three idiots and um, Super Thirty. Just the, the 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 reaction, the pressures we know uh, as educators that kids go through, and you know college students go through, and the emphasis people put on education, the fact that you know. It, it, sometimes we focus on things that aren't really important. You know what I mean? Grades for the most part are arbitrary. You know, it doesn't really, especially when kids are younger, it just doesn't really matter or um, it doesn't really grade a, a child's intelligence more or more so just their effort. You know what I mean? And yeah, Tarzan mean Par is another really good one. Again, I'm biased because as an educator, those films are really important to me. And in America, dude, we don't get a lot of educational films. The last one I saw was on HBO. And it was, um, it went straight to the HBO, probably because of the pandemic. I'm not sure if it would have gone to the theater anyway, but it's with Hugh Jackman. Um, oh, what's the name of it about the the test stealing scandal in prisoners. New York? No, 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 no. Uh, it's not prisoners. It's, um, wow, I cannot. It's a bad education or something like that? Bad, bad education, exactly. Bad education. And I mean, again, the to me, that's my favorite. Nick? I'm going to go back to Gully Boy, but, you know, I'm not really a fan of older films, but I really did enjoy Dewar quite a bit. Um, it was a film that I feel like had everything that you can want in it, and it was made in 1974. We're talking about 50 years ago, so I, I'm going to put Dewar in that list, but I still put Gully Boy at the top just because I thought Ramveer Singh was just so amazing and transcendent in that film. The music was fantastic. I have a playlist with Gully Boy songs on there, and I even speak Hindi for crying out loud that I listen to quite religiously. So I still put Gully Boy. What about you, Professor? What's your favorite of all time? I'm going to say probably uh, Piku um, uh, because of the dynamic of yeah. Irfan Khan, um, Amitabh Bakshan, and... Um, and who? Topeka, yes. Um, because it is the personalities you see there is uh, me, my wife, and my father-in-law. That would be what it would be like if we all went on a, a car trip across country. And, um, you know, that's that's usually a movie I start with. Like if I'm going to introduce somebody to Indian films, I start with something like that. Or may maybe Drisham. Drisham's pretty good. Depending on, uh, you know, I, I didn't see that coming at all. So I would say probably Piku is one of my favorites. I mean, it's just, um, especially especially Amitabh's character in it. He's so much like my father-in-law. And when you listen to those two talk, Irfan Khan and Amitabh, it's stuff that you would hear, you know, uh, me and my father-in-law talking about in a car together. Like, like just nonstop. Just, a, yes. And the Warrior Queen is much nicer to her dad. She's... Yes, yes. She, she's very nice to her dad. I was going to say, is that the warrior queen in the background there? It, Tell her we say hello for sure. Everybody says hello. She said hello too. Um. So yeah, I would say uh, Piku. I hey guys, I got to get running. Uh, this was super awesome. Can we do this again? Absolutely, you bro, guys absolutely. absolutely. I'm I'm really sorry about the trolls. And I'm that gonna. Out. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't worry about it. you. You have like a boss. You you are a professional. I'm going to send you an email with some suggested movies that we can review okay. for the upcoming future. And you, we'll get that dialogue going okay. that way. Make sure I have your phone number. But thanks so much to the professor for joining us. We're actually going to end our part of this stream as well. Two hours is usually our limit. We hope everyone's having a great Saturday night, a great Saturday morning, wherever you're at. And we hope that everyone is staying safe. We, uh, we definitely hit our all-time high with this 155. We're watching this right now, which is just fantastic. We, uh, we have more videos coming out. Um, Gabe, what do you want to say to your loyal fan base? Uh, yeah, just to check, wait for the reviews coming out. Um, we're going to have that on Cricket for, Ameri Cricket for Americans. If you're not already subscribed over there, go check that out. That's nothing but Cricket. Um, that's where we're doing our test reviews. I noticed a couple people were mentioning about test reviews. Um, Nick had did a, a solo review of tests here. But it was a whole series over there. We're doing episode by episode breakdown. So, yeah, check that out. And um, thank you guys for showing up. Much appreciated. Uh, appreciate all the comments, guys. You know, um, it's okay to disagree. You know, me and Nick disagree all the time. You guys know I'm a Ben Affleck fan. <laughs> Nick is not. He does not like him as that man. But it's cool. It's cool. We all got different opinions. Just, you know, keep it respectful. But, uh, yeah, man, other than that.
Um, get no, I, I don't mind Ben Affleck as Batman at all. I don't want to get into this topic again because I know our audience hates it. But I actually I love Ben Affleck in Batman versus Superman. He was fantastic. He was in the perfect shape. He was in the perfect mind frame. I just didn't like what they did with him in Justice League. That's all I'm trying to say. And I would have loved to get a solo Ben Affleck Batman movie. I just I still put Christian Bale and Michael Keaton as my two favorite, but Ben Affleck's probably number three as far as the people that played Batman. Um, but okay. yeah, check out Cricket for Americans. Like Gabe said, we have videos on there. We have reactions on there. The test episode four will be coming out probably tomorrow. So look out for that. They like um, don't we, end we with just ben finished Affleck. a review for you all. <laughs> Say what? In the comments, is that <laughs> don't end with Ben Affleck. Affleck. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll end with this we got a review coming for uri in the next few days on born reviews we got cricket tuesday coming up in a few days obviously and with the school year being over and us having more time you know it's just dangerous for us we'll be able to be able to provide more movie reviews and whatnot for you let us know on instagram check out our instagram at boring underscore reviews what your requests are what you want us to talk about there and with all that being said thanks so much for joining us until next time we know all things.